well, music doesn't really run in my family. Um, so I'm really kind of the only one. My grandfather played some saxophone jazz player back in the day, but that's about it. Uh, I kind of just always had an interest in, um, at first, you know, the look of it, you know, Kiss and, uh, you know, Zeppelin and like even earlier, the Beatles and stuff like that. And, uh, and I just, I kind of knew that's what I wanted to do, you know, from a very young age. And um, <clears throat> my parents were supportive. Um, they still wanted me to keep playing sports and, and uh, you know, <laughs> get good grades in school, that type of thing. Uh, and I was just drawn to music and uh, I just kept going to see how far it could take me. And, and how did you gravitate towards playing drums specifically? I always looked at the drummer. Uh, like you and I were speaking about earlier, um, how your eyes just lock on to, uh, uh, to someone on the stage. And it was, for me, it was always the drummer. And, um, and I just was like, yeah, I could probably do that. You know, I could probably do that someday, you know? And um, I just kept going. You know? So, so when I announced that I had you coming up as a guest, uh, I, I sent out the bat signal to your fans and they came out in droves with questions. So throughout this interview, I'm sprink sprinkling in just a ton of fan questions. And sure. the first one is from Aaron Hilton, who says he asked, do you play any other instruments beside the drums? He was just curious. Negative. <laughs> not the uh, spoons I, or the triangle, no, no? Oh, yeah. I can do percussion in instruments. Not well, but... Um, but, I mean, you know, I can get my point across with a guitar or something like that, you know. Uh, other than that, I'm I'm, I'm a drummer. And... But and I, do, I do like to listen to uh, that, obviously, because that inspires what I'm going to play as well, too, so... I appreciate these amazing guitar players and bass players and keyboard players and singers and so on and so forth. So, And as a kid, before becoming a musician, was there anything that you wanted to be when you grew up? God, when I was young. Yeah, I wanted to be a fireman. I did. That's when so I, funny. Two, so, sorry, two, two guests ago, Julian Taylor of Staggered Crossing, same thing. He wanted to be a fireman. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I just... I. When I was really young, like five or something like that, I remember my me and my dad were going to hockey practice and we passed this big fire and I was just looking at these firemen like they were just gods, you know, like, oh man, I would love to do that, you know, and they are, so... <laughs> You, yeah. you you men you mentioned hockey. We actually have a comment here. This is from Joseph Marks, who says, I played peewee hockey with John way uh, back when. So I can't verify if that's uh, true or not. But, but That I is true. But uh, yeah, I, I played all the way up through high school. And then music took over or? Well, music was still involved, actually. Um, I was I went to private school, uh, freshman, sophomore, junior. And then I ended up for my senior year going back to my hometown. And, uh, uh, it was, it was, uh, I spent a lot of time in the music room, uh, so that or on the ice, one or the other. Okay. If, if you and I were friends back when you were 16 and you invited me over to your place to listen to some music, what albums would you be playing for me? At age, like, what'd you say? 16? 16 as a 16 year old, a teenager. Oh, okay. So Oh, God, I got to think back now. So pro ACDC, Back in Black. Um, God, what a oh, Judas Priest, um, British Steel, any of them, pretty much Screaming for Vengeance, whatever. Uh, Sabbath, um, that kind of thing. I was, I was a metalhead, um, you know, pretty much always, really. <laughs> um, my first earliest band that I listened to and I, I liked was Kiss. Uh, just the theatrics and the just blood and the fire. And it was, it was so cool, you know. Um, but yeah, those, those would be some of them. There was more. But yeah, man, Kiss, <laughs> Kiss actually comes up in, in, I don't know. 20% of the interviews as, as people's like first concert or yeah, man. favorite early band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were they were so just interesting, and uh, you know, you didn't you didn't you wanted to know what was under that face paint, you know, so bad. 
uh, I don't know how they pulled it off. They would never be able to do that now. <laughs> yeah. Totally, uh, social media works now. Yeah, yeah. Time, times are different for sure. We have, we have a question from Donna Nash. Uh, she wants to know, what are some of the jobs that you had leading up to becoming a successful musician? Were there any like memorable ones that stand out? I would I wouldn't relate this to music, but uh, <laughs> I uh, I'd relate it to creativity. But I used to cut hair. Uh, that was one of uh, I was a uh, barber hairstylist, and um, I sold motorcycles. You know, there's two of them right there. I mean, my dad had me working on my summers off from school on the farm or picking tobacco. We we come from an area where there's a lot of tobacco, and they use them for the wrappers for the. So I picked a lot of that, a ton of that. Um, so yeah, I, I had those kind of jobs. We we have a question from Brett Greenberg. Uh, how early on did you know you had something special to offer it a, as a musician and that this could maybe be something you could do as a career? Oh, probably not. Maybe before Stained, like a little bit before Stained, I would say. Um you know, it always depends on who you're playing with, too, of course. Um, yeah, I would say that feeling probably hit me right about a little bit before Stain. Question from William Santola. Which drummers were your biggest influences growing up? And are, are your favorite drummers now different than the, the early influences? Well, there's so many other drummers that have come along. So, I mean, you know, I got to throw Neil Peart in there. I got to throw John Bonham, of course. He's probably the king for me, I would say. If, you know, he's on my Mount Rushmore for sure. Um, Stuart Copeland. Uh, the Police? Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, God, there's so many great drummers. You're uh, mentioning Danny Carey. Oh, uh, Danny. Well, I, that's what I was going to say a little later on with Danny Carey, Thomas Hawk, you know, guys like that. Um, uh, geez, who else? Um, oh, Jeff Percaro from Toto. He's such a groover. Bernard Purdy's another one like that. Uh, group players, you know, um, I was always drawn to those kind of guys. And <clears throat> guys that were interesting to listen to, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then, yeah, later on, Danny Carey, of course, uh, Thomas Hawk from the Sugar. He's just beyond ridiculous. And, um, you know, it, there's so many good ones, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah, we we could we could keep going down the list, but uh, a, a lot of times musicians, when we're young, you know, we're to, we're told you got to get a good job, you got to get that good education, you got to play it safe. You know, a, a career in the music industry is is that's that's just a pipe dream. It's not realistic. Did you ever have to deal with uh, that kind of adversity uh, with, with that kind of resistance around you? And if so, how did you, how did you kind of push through that? Sure. I did. Um, you know, you always get doubters and people, Oh, that's never going to happen. And that's that and the other thing. So you get the negativity and you just try to uh, stay positive about it and be like, you know, look, I can do this. I mean, you know, I got to get with the right group of people to do it. But um, uh, it, it can it can be done easily. It's it's within reach. So yeah. As as we move into the start of of stained, uh, we have a question here that kind of does a segue between. So this is from Sean Warden, who says, "Ask him about J Cat, his band oh. before stained, uh, yeah. how they came up with the name." And he says, "I love their song." Bong hits for breakfast, and I checked that out. <laughs> he posted a link to it. So, okay, so that that was a bit. It was me and Aaron uh, Lewis, that is, and two friends of ours, Chris Bellini and Tori Sands. And it's just that it, it was just kind of like a, um, uh, a like a day gig for us, you know, kind of thing. So we put we formed this four piece band, and we just went out and played just fun songs, you know, things like that. And actually, that's where it's been a while. And outside, we're written uh, with that group right that there. That long ago, before the release of those songs. Yeah, that's how it started. So uh, Josh Abraham, who's producing us, had heard it's been a while now, and uh, yeah, outside. outside, and decided to put them on the Break the Cycle record. So um, yeah, so <laughs> that's when that got started. That whole thing. 
That's but Jake. yeah, Jake Cat is John, Chris, Aaron, and Tori. Right? Yeah. Damn, it's just the name of the the members. Yeah, that's Who knew? It's so stupid. It's so dumb. Yeah, that's way too simple. <laughs> that's, it's that's, so dumb. That's awesome.